One of the most complex components to successful 3D printing is the usage of supports. First, let's understand what a support is. A 3D printer cannot print in the air. A 3D printer needs a previous layer to build upon. As a 3D printer reaches sections that no longer have material underneath them, it's effectively printing in the air. This doesn't work for obvious reasons. Enter supports. Supports is a material printed by the 3D printer with the intention of removing it afterwards. The whole purpose of a support is to provide a platform for which the printer can print those areas that are not over a previous layer. In the 3D printing world, we call that an overhang. This here is a basic 3D model that's labeled showing you the various angles of its overhangs. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. The higher this overhang, the more difficult it will be for your printer to successfully print that overhang without a support. It's hard for me to say what will be the max for your specific 3D printer, but I would like you to start off by considering 60 to be a very high angle overhang where you should start requiring supports. Let's take a walk through basic support settings. I'm using a Creality Endo 3 Max profile in the standard 0.2. Pull down this menu and scroll down to a section called Support. In here, you will see a checkbox. We are going to check it to turn on supports. Once you do that, various settings will open. We are gonna start with the support structure of normal Normal may be the only option you have at the moment. You will then see there are lots of possible options. Support structure, placement, overhang angle, pattern, density, Z distance, and more. We are gonna focus on placement, angle, pattern, and density. Here in overhang angle, you will see the degrees in which the printer will consider it an overhang and apply supports. Currently, it's set at 45. So if you turn to the right and look underneath this model, you will notice that anything above 45 degrees is red. If I was to erase this and change it to 60, you will now see that everything from 60 degrees and above is red. If I change it to 20, you will see that everything from 20 degrees and above is red. That means the printer will begin applying supports from 20 degrees and up. So let's have a look at these mysterious supports. So we are gonna to go to 50, which is fairly conservative. And you'll now see that the model wants supports over the angle of 50. The support pattern is zigzag. We are gonna leave that be. And now we are going to look at a very important category for supports, and that's density. This is exactly what it says. This is the density of the supports. Increasing that number will make the support more dense. Decreasing the number will make the support less dense. The higher the percentage of the density, the more material will be required for your printer to build those supports that will add material usage, and that will extend the time required to print this model because it has to print those higher density supports. Lowering the support density will do exactly the opposite. It will create supports that are less dense. Those supports require less material and less print time because there's less physical material for the printer to create. We will have a closer look at support density in a moment. For now, let's have a quick look at these mysterious supports. We're gonna start by scrolling up and looking at support placement. The default is everywhere. Everywhere means exactly that. The printer will create supports everywhere. That includes on the model and on the build plate. This setting becomes more important to understand as you move into more advanced models that require support in some tricky areas. The other option is touching build plate. Touching build plate is also exactly that. Touching build plate means it will create supports that only touch the build plate 
and ignore the model. This can be beneficial because when supports don't contact the model, you don't have to worry about removing them from the model or having the supports affect the surface of the model. However, you may not always have that option because there are times your model will require supports that are above other areas of the model and require you to build supports on that model. It would not be able to construct supports properly to support the areas that require it and the print could fail. Let's have a look at the supports. We will start by running supports at a 60 degree angle, set to everywhere, normal support structure, default everything else, and press the slice button. Once there, press preview, and you will see Cura has generated supports. One thing you'll notice is that we have everywhere chosen. That means Cura generated supports both on the build plate and on the model itself. One of the differences that you will see is that Cura also created an interface between the model and the supports. This interface is designed to allow you to remove the supports more easily without affecting or damaging the model itself. You will also see where the supports contact the print bed. That interface is not required. However, where it does contact the model, that interface is present. We will talk more about this interface when we get into more advanced options. For now, we are going to look at the difference between everywhere and build plate only. By opening this menu, changing support placement to touching build plate and re-slicing, you will come to see that Cura has now generated supports that are only touching the build plate. It has not generated supports that contact the model. However, you'll notice that supports are not generated in areas that require supports. So using that setting on this model might not be appropriate and might not result in a successful print. There are ways to get around this, and we will talk about that when we get into more advanced options for supports. Let's have a look at density. Before we do that, I want to generate supports that are everywhere. Now you'll see that we've generated supports from 60 degrees and above. Cura is able to support the entire model in all areas that exceed 60 degrees with supports because we chose everywhere. On the bottom right hand corner, you'll see a whopping 12 hours and 20 minutes with 86 grams of material. Now, this is a very lightweight model. Unlike a larger, bulkier, heavier model, this is a very lightweight model, which will require very little strength in order for it to hold itself up during printing. So we can get away with a lower density support. Let's do that right now. You'll notice that supports are set to the default of 20. 20 is a significant amount of support density, and there are many opportunities to use less. This being a very light model, we could drop this by as much as half, perhaps even more. So we are going to reduce this to 8% density and hit the slice button. You'll recall earlier that our print was nearly 12 hours and our materials were nearly 90 grams. By just reducing the density of this support structure, we've reduced the print time and the material dramatically. You'll see right here that the supports to me in my eye look more than sufficient to support and allow printing of this very thin, very lightweight structure on top of them. Like many features in STL slicing, you can tinker with this by looking at how the supports generate at different densities. Here it is in 14. You'll see the time has gone up dramatically and the material has gone up dramatically. And you'll see the support is much thicker and stronger with lines spaced much closer together. Speaking of lines, Let's talk about support pattern. This is a slightly more complicated feature 
and you may not always know which material to use to support your structure. However, some materials remove more easily than others. I find zigzag and lines to be easier to remove than other patterns. Lines is actually my go-to pattern for lightweight supports that I need to be sure are easy to remove. Let's generate lines. Once you generate lines, you can check the supports themselves and you'll see the pattern of the support is lines. When you switch to zigzag, you'll see that the pattern of supports is virtually the same. This is why lines and zigzag are both easy to remove. However, if you need something a little stronger, you could switch to grid. When you slice using grid, you'll notice the support pattern is much more hardy using a full grid of support lines as opposed to just zigzag or straight lines. This support will take longer to print, but will quite obviously support greater weight and is something worth using if you're going to be building something much larger and heavier on top of this support structure. One of the things to help you consider which one you want to use is how much impact the change will make on your print time and your material usage. So let's, for example, look at this 69 grams, 12 hours for a nice strong grid pattern. Let's say we slice it at 20% density in the grid pattern. You're looking at 13 hours, 56 minutes and 79 grams of material. Let's change the support density to lines, leaving everything else the same. You will see that the material usage is exactly the same, but the print time has been reduced to 11 hours and 42 minutes. That's a significant difference in print time, especially for such a small model. So you may find that a simple change in your support density or your support pattern could have a drastic impact on your print time. And it might be worth experimenting by choosing different ones, slicing and having a look. Find one that looks acceptable to you, but offers you the best usage of your time and material and go with that. However, if you're unsure which one to choose and you're having doubt, I would go with a stronger support such as grid. In my experience, zigzag is typically an acceptable support pattern. I find lines to be a very effective support pattern when printing something that's very tall, but not very large or heavy. For example, if I'm supporting a small object that's really high, I'm going to use a low density and I'm going to use lines so that it's building a very lightweight structure all the way up to support that small overhang as opposed to building this dense structure in this thick grid of support all the way up that whole time just to support something that weighs very little. But tree supports are different from normal supports in that they grow like the branches of a tree bending out from a main trunk. This allows you to support areas of your model that are not over the build plate. In other words, you can support areas of the model that are directly over the model itself with the base of that support stemming from the build plate rather than the model. So let's have a look at what I mean. Here's our little model. This is an arc and this is 60, 70, 80 degree overhang. This needs support. Clearly it's over the model. If we choose normal and slice it. You're going to see that the support comes from the model up to the model. If you choose touching build plate and slice, you'll notice that the supports are not touching the model, but they're also not supporting the model. So we are going to choose tree supports, touching build plate and see what happens. One very important thing to note is that when switching to tree supports as of Cura 5, support density will be set to zero by default. You can go ahead and use tree supports with the support density set to zero. Notice the slicing takes a bit longer.
It's a slightly more complicated method. Walkura calculates the best way to support your model. And would you look at that? Much like a tree, supports are now coming from the build plate only and then branching out to support the model at the 60 degree point that you specified. Unlike normal supports, if you choose everywhere and slice, tree supports will still attempt to support your model using only the build plate. You'll see right here that even though we chose everywhere, Cura decided we can support the model using only the build plate. So there it is. That's the basic usage of supports when it comes to 3D printing. Following these methods, you should be able to take any model, make a decision between tree and normal, make a decision between lower overhangs and higher overhangs, make a decision on the pattern or just leave it as default, and most important, make a decision on support density. 20% support density is almost always too much, and I highly recommend getting down closer to 10 and then tinkering around plus 2 or 3, 11, 12, 8, 9, to find out the support density that you really need, seldom passing 15 or 20. Go ahead and practice. Find something to print. Tinker with the supports. Decide what you think will work, and then do a test print and find out if you were correct. If you weren't, go back, make the necessary adjustments, and try again. When it comes to 3D printing, your 3D printer is capable of tremendous mileage, and filament is quite affordable, so please don't be afraid to waste time or waste filament. Go ahead and print stuff. Test, fail, test, and fail again. Every time you do this, you'll learn more and more and more about the capabilities of 3D printing in general and the capabilities of your specific 3D printer.